Tony Bennett and Bill Charlock pick yourself up. It's ten past six. As China's factory workers start heading back to their jobs after the New Year break, what sort of conditions are they returning to? It's a question that's as important for the companies that source from China as it is to the workers themselves. Nobody wants to get caught out in a child labour or collapsing building scandal. But the audit system used by companies to monitor the factories they source from is increasingly being put under the microscope, with some saying many audits aren't worth the paper the boxes are ticked on. Earlier, I sat down with Charlie Bradshaw, boss of Matrix APA, who buys uh, from Chinese factories, and Peter McAllister from the Ethical Trading Initiative, who explained the problem he has with the system. Well, I think the first thing to remember, Guy, is that you know many workers want to work in international supply chains. It's their jobs, it's their livelihoods. What they don't want, of course, is to be abused or not paid properly. And no big brand on the high street wants that. Where the disconnect comes is you can't really find out what's going on in a factory with an occasional audit, which is normally announced, which is largely run by management. It's just not a tool that works. We know that you've got to start talking to management, you've got to develop trust, you've got to listen to workers, you've got to really want to understand what's happening. So does that mean that you know, in the real world, in, in factories in China today, there are loads of people, grown-ups or kids or whatever, working in really bad environments and not being fed and not getting any sleep or days off and things like that? No, in fairness to China, it's not what it was 20 years ago and child labour is not a big feature anymore. But there are still lots of issues around discrimination or working hours or poor pay or overtime. And those issues don't often come up to the CEOs and those making the commercial decisions in brands. So we know there's a disconnect. We know there are problems to be resolved. And the system, as you say, Guy, is just not delivering the right information to the people who need to make the decisions. Charlie Bradshaw, you see what's happening on the ground, I guess, because you, as a business, you're sourcing stuff for big clients in the UK. You're sourcing stuff in China for them. What, what sort of things do you see on the ground? Well, I suppose we see audits not working. There's so much money invested in the space now. There's hundreds of auditing companies who will offer their services and, and often quite a high cost as well. But what we find is, is that the factories have started to falsify the information quite heavily to the point that um, some believe that the, uh, the large majority of audits that are coming out of China are, are falsified. So for me, it's just not working. There's lots of other solutions, but auditing isn't the best solution. What are those solutions? Well, the way we've approached it is to take a beyond auditing approach and to do these capacity building projects where we go and coach and educate the factory owners and how to be better employers. You're spending, in fact, less money than you would be doing an audit, but you're getting a far more effectual result. And what's the risk then for companies, Peter, at the moment? You say they're not, everything's not smooth. But they've got a piece of paper. You know, they, they, if they're thinking about their reputation, which I guess most companies are, they've got a piece of paper to say, well, you know, we're behaving responsibly. Well, I think the most tragic example we saw of that over the last few years was in Bangladesh when a building that had been audited, that had passed several audits, ultimately fell down and over a 1,000 people were killed. And that's not alone. We've seen that too many times. So for big brands, basically somewhere in the supply chain, somewhere through the, the decision-making chain, people are not working off information that's real, as Charlie said. And it's not just in China. We know people know how to falsify audits or they know how to coach workers to respond to audits. And in fact, they will tell us that we get 20 or 30 audits a year. How on earth can we develop a good business when we're audited to death, but no one wants to talk to us about actually how to deal with the problems themselves? So it's not one audit per factory. It's a well, each company that's going to work with a factory does his own audit. In the extreme cases, you can have 20 or 30 audits because the different customers will want different types of audits and no one will use the information from another company. So, Charlie, it sounds like the, the system is in chaos. You say you work in a different way, which is better. I don't want to blow your trumpet for you, but why isn't everybody using that way? There must be reasons why it's not easy to do. I just think a lot of the time the commercial decision makers aren't aware of the other options. This is an area that most CEOs and, and C C COOs are are terrified about you know child labor huge overtime so when they're told we've got an audit we've got we've got the sort of get out of jail free card here they put the tick in the box and they move on the reality is it's often the zero tolerance approach that the retailers demand of the suppliers that actually create the problem in the first place just to explain what do you mean a zero tolerance so we call it the comply or die approach you know they will set such high standards for factories that there's no way they can really achieve they fake it they falsify the audit. And it's very easy to do. I mean, in China, for example, there's a host of software solutions for factories to have 
double, triple, even quadruple accounting systems running at the same time. So when the auditors come in on that pre-announced date, they can easily show them the numbers that pass an audit. So are you saying they shouldn't, in a way, be so demanding of the factories? Personally, I do. I think it would be much better to have a system where we're making progress and it's transparent progress. I think if people expect it all to be rosy and 100% compliant, and in fact there's a lot of falsification behind that, I just see it as an ineffectual system. And Peter, for a company over here that's using the audit system, sourcing stuff in China, what's the worst case scenario? Well, the worst case scenario is you have a much higher risk than you realise. And if you rely on audit for that information, you just will not be seeing where the risk is. So you run the risk of being held up in the media. On the plus side of this guy, I think some companies are now realising, as Charlie said, look, this isn't working for us. How do we develop different types of relationships? And how do we start to actually recognise that we're as culpable in driving the conditions in those factories as the factory owner themselves? And therefore, we've got to share an understanding of what's happening. And audit just doesn't give you that. That was Peter McAllister from the Ethical Trading Initiative and before that, Charlie Bradshaw, who's the boss of Matrix APA. It's 16 minutes past six. Traffic and travel are next.